Let's bless each other, be at peace. You are the missionaries to save the world. You shall take possession of their land. Thank you for the great the priest. May this time be the time where you really listen to the voice of God. It's not for one pastor that's standing here and speaking. May the voice of God to the people of God uh, be heard to you. This is where we uh, have conflicts. We think to ourselves that we do not match with God. The conflict of the walk of faith comes by thinking that we do not match with God. God is giving us the word, but because this word does not match with me, that is why we are always hindering and have conflicts and have problems inside of our lives. Then why does not God's word match with me? That is because we have so much physical things. No matter how much we would do the walk of faith, we cannot break free from myself. And because we are living inside of the physical world, we are uh, remaining inside of that place. Because the things that we see are physical and the worldly things, that is why it's hard for us to break free from it. And they're living in centered around success, and that is why they're facing hardship. That is why no matter how much we listen to the Word of God, it does not match with me. I am living in a physical thing, but God is speaking of the spiritual things and the spiritual blessings. We're doing things that are physical, but God is speaking of the spiritual things and the spiritual blessings. And when we do the, when we enjoy the spiritual things, then the physical things will follow. And no matter how much we walk our walk of faith, we do not uh, enjoy the answer and we're living on. <laughs> because they cannot enjoy their answer and they're just kind of used to that. This walk of faith must not uh, uh, be dragged on. We must really hold on to the true thing and we must truly enjoy it. What is the real thing that God has given us? What is the essence of all essence? There is something that God has already implanted inside of us. It is that we are created in the image of God. What does it mean of image of God? We are created as a being that will live eternally. It is telling us that we are given the infinite amount of power. And that is why, if you see in Genesis 1, 28, it says, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And that is why every day, this must be restored inside of our lives. If you see in Genesis 2, 7, God read, and, uh, breathed into his nostril the breath of life and the man became a living creature. We must have this inside of us. And God has given us a blessing of Eden. God has perfectly created us and has placed us inside of the land of Eden. 
but they lo we lost hold of this. And that is why through Christ, with the Word inside of us, God has implanted a more, more perfect thing that is perfect than uh, the land of Eden, and He placed it inside of us. Then what does it mean that the image of God is inside of us? What does it mean by the Spirit, Spirit of God is inside of us? It means that the Spirit that is inside of us is facing the throne, and that is the blessing that is given from above. God uh, has who has given us blessings and who has created us is telling us to receive the blessing of the throne. When I enjoy the blessing of the throne, then that is shown by trans the power that transcends time and space. And it is shown as the light to shine the 237 nations. How can we uh, understand this with the physical mind? There, we cannot understand this physically. But God has given us the real thing, and that is the blessing of the throne, the transcending time and space, and it is saving the 237 nations with the light. What is the throne? It's Acts 1.3. is the kingdom of God. That is the throne. What is the power that transcends time and space? It's in Genesis 2.7. God has breathed into our nostrils a breath of life, and we became a living creature. And they were prayed only for the Holy Spirit. It's talking about the uh, the transcending power that transcends time and space. Is talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. And then, what is the light to shine the 237 nation? Inside the Bible, it's telling us that Christ is the light for the Gentiles. Just imagine this inside your mind. It's the God's kingdom, only Holy Spirit, and Christ. What is this talking about? It's Acts 1, 1, 3, and 8. If you hold on to this, enjoy this, and the more you enjoy it, the answers of God is given to us. To me and to the church that I'm in, and inside of our occupations, the kingdom of God will be upon that place. It is the blessing that God is giving to the people who enjoy the spiritual facts. The more we restore this, everything that is inside of our lives will be restored. And the more this is restored, then the more things that God has given us will be restored. The more we uh, enjoy the spiritual fact, we are able to see the future. We do not have to go to find a shaman to see the future. We are able to see the future. And we are able to see why disasters keeps on coming, no matter how much we try. And that's why we must come to this answer. Uh, we are able to see the answer because we are able to see why the world is facing disasters. Then through everything inside of the field, we are able to see visions. The more the field is uh, in a bad in a bad situation, we are able to see it more. We must really enjoy this and restore this. We, we without us even knowing, we fall down 
inside of the field. And we live a walk of faith diligently, but we fall without us knowing. But if we really find the real thing that God has given me, then the greater things, the greater answers are given to us inside of the field. And that is the blessings that God, uh, the seven remnants enjoyed. All the seven remnants, their situation and environments were bad, but th that did not matter to them. And they knew why those things came and why disasters keep on coming in this land. They had the answer. That is why no matter what kind of situations they were in, what kind of environments they were in, even if it, were, if it was bad, they held on to uh, the answer that God has given them. And that is why we must enjoy the spiritual things. Many people live, uh, say that they live a uh, walk of faith, but they think that this is not important to them because it's not seen to the eyes. That is why they're walking the walk of faith and they do not receive answers and they're just living on that way. It doesn't just end by uh, not receiving answer. They'll just become slaves to unbelievers and slave to the world. Really open up your eyes to see the spiritual world and the spiritual blessings. In today's uh, passage, God is preparing the future for the Israelites. You know Deuteronomy very well. Before they were entering into the land of Canaan in Gardas Barnea, uh, God has, is speaking to the Israelites. God is making the Israelites prepare for the new vision that God is going to give them. But how were the Israelites? Because they lost hold of the spiritual world, the spiritual fact, the spiritual blessings, they did not know the plan of God. They could not see the plan of God. That is why they held, uh, they embraced the physical vision. God told them to go into the land of Canaan, but they thought that was just the land that they, God would give them. So that, uh, they thought that land was filled like, physically with good things. Because they lost hold of all the spiritual things, that is why they held on to the physical visions. And as a result, they resented in front of the Red Sea. If they really uh, tasted the work of God of Passover that happened, and if they stood in front of the Red Sea, then they must have the expectation how God will work in front of the Red Sea. They came out of Egypt that they could not come out of. How can they escape from the hands of Pharaoh? But they escaped during the Passover. They tasted the work of God. If they face the Red Sea, then they must find the uh, fact how God will uh, work in front of the Red Sea, but they resent it instead. Because they had the vision that was up, the faith of ups and downs. That is why they walked through the wilderness and they were facing problems because of what to wear, what to eat, and what to, uh, and their shelters. 
but God protected them with the pillar of fire and pillar of cloud. And gave them manna and quill so that th to feed them and led them to the land of Canaan. But what was the nature that these Israelites had during the wilderness? It was resenting and lamenting. That is because they held on to the physical vision and they only held on to the physical things and that's the result. And that is so if you see in Exodus, uh, they made idols. As they were walking through the wilderness, yes, they had a lot of difficulties. But God protected them with the pillar of fire and pillar of cloud and gave them manna and quill to eat. But they could not believe that. Because they could not believe that, they made idols. If you see in Exodus, in the book of Exodus, they said, For ourselves, let us create a God for ourselves. And that is why this one uh, leader, uh, Aaron, Pro Prophet Aaron said, Oh, bring your all your silver and gold and melt it. And they, that is why they created this uh, idol. If we really know the spiritual fact, then we are able to wait. We are able to wait what God will do. But because we do not know the spiritual fact, that is why we are trying to uh, solve this problem with ourselves through the physical things. Uh, in front of the land of Canaan, uh, they chose the faithful men, 12 faithful men, and sent them as a spy. And after they went and spied on the land of Canaan, and after they came back, you know what the 10 people said. The 10 of the spies said they were like grasshoppers to them because they do not know the spiritual blessings. They saw the land of Canaan physically. And that is, uh, we ourselves also say that uh, we are like grasshoppers. But Joshua and Caleb, they knew the spiritual blessing. And what did they say? Their uh, bread to us. Because their, their commanders have left them. What does this mean? It's talking about the spiritual world. And But God is with us. That is why they are food to us. Really, open up your eyes to see the spiritual world and the spiritual blessings. If not, we have no choice but to uh, look towards the world with the physical things. I said this in the early morning. If you do not remove this rock inside of us, then we cannot break free from uh, self-centeredness. How can we, uh, to break free from self uh, from self-centeredness, then that is through Christ. And breaking free from uh, the material wealth, it is by the Holy Spirit. The things that we see are just uh, it's, uh, it's for a moment, but uh, what is unseen to our eyes is eternal. Why did they have the thought that they were the only chosen person, people? That also came from the uh, 
faith that was up and down. Yes, the God has chosen the Israelites first. But the Israelites thought to themselves that they were the only people that would receive salvation. That was the misconception of the Israelites. They serve God as the only God for themselves. It had no. What does Messiah mean? They were looking for the Messiah to break them free and set them free from all of these rules and the physical things. If you do not know the spiritual things and the spiritual world and spiritual blessing, then as the people say that the Christianity is a West, Western thought, they say that Christianity is a Western religion. If you do not know the spiritual fact and the spiritual world, then that word is right. But that's not it. Really see the, uh, really open up your eyes to see the God-given spiritual world and spiritual thought, uh, spiritual blessing. Why did God give them the book of Deuteronomy at the end? It's telling them to have this new vision. Is open up your eyes to see the future. And that is what God, God is telling. In second point, God has given them the new vision, and that is talked inside of the book of Deuteronomy. If you see in the verse one today, and the whole commandment that I commanded you today, you shall be careful to do. And that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that Lord swore to give you, your fathers. It is saying the land that the Lord swore to give your fathers. What does this mean? It is the world evangelization. God wanted to open up the eyes of the Israelites to see this fact, to have this uh, world, the vision for world evangelization. There is something that they must have in, in advance. It says, "The whole commandment that the that I commanded you today, you shall be careful to do." Is living inside of the word is our commission or our mission. It is telling us through the world we must find the blessing of salvation and enjoy it. That is why living inside of the world is our mission. Then later on the world evangelization will be given to us. And if you see in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the, and the Word was God. Uh, to give us victory, the Word became flesh and came to us, and that was God. With the word, uh, the people to save myself and the world with the word, and that is us. And if you see in John 1 9, and the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. That is why if you have this light inside of us and it imprinted inside of us, then the answers of God will be given to us. 
if you have the word of God, then where inside of the field, darkness flee and the lights will come. When this word is imprinted inside of us, then it will be imprinted inside of our thoughts, inside of our brains, and that will be connected through our soul, and this is connected with the things that are eternal, and that will be shown uh, through our bodies and inside of our fields. Then if word is really uh, imprinted inside of us, then the work of the kingdom of God will take place inside of our fields. This is a spiritual... This must become one. This is a spiritual principle. Our thoughts goes to our heart. And what's inside of our heart is imprinted inside of our brain. And our brain is connected with our soul. And this soul is connected with something that is eternal. Why are people saying that they must live with the supernatural powers and all these uh, this potential uh, po hidden potential power that because that is because the, all the things that are inside of our brains is connected with the with our soul and that is connected with the forces of darkness. What what I imprint inside of my heart is everything. If you see in Philippians, in Philippians 2.13, it says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. We're not saying that this is an answer or that's an answer. The word of God to be imprisoned inside of me, that's an answer. That is why whenever you listen to the word, really imp emplace this in word inside of you and restoring the spiritual strength and really save our field. And that is when forces of darkness is broken down. And so if you see in verse 2, God is, uh, uh, is showing that how God has tested the Israelites. It says, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert for these 40 years. It is to humble you and to test you. There are two tests. There is a test that God gives, and there is a test that Satan gives. We call test for when God gives us a t this test, we say test. But what do we say for Satan? We say temptation, which means tempting them. Is drag, uh, Satan wants to drag his people. That is why they're, he's tempting people. But God is testing them. What does it say? It is testing if they are the people of faith or not. That is why there is something that we must do beforehand. In verse 2 it says, It says, to humble you and to test you in order to know what was inside your heart, whether or not you would keep His commands. It says, whether or not you would keep His commands. It's holding on to the Word of God in advance. And that will become my wish and will make 
God happy. We must not do things for our own will, with our own will. The thoughts of God must become my thoughts. And our uh, choir sang praise today. It says, May the will inside of me become your will. The will inside of me must not become my own will. It must become the will of God. The, God trained the Israelites for 40 years in the wilderness for this. To hold on to the word of God and the will of God as my will. Not living with my own standards. For the word of God to become my thought. And for the word of God to become my will. And in Philippians 2.13, 2, that is what when God is most happy and will take on with His Word. Because for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. If the word becomes my wish, then God will do. God would work. It's not my standards, but it is the word of God, and really hold on to it like that. And you can see that God fed them with manna and quill. People say, from the land, what we eat comes. And people, many people say that other people must help me. But is that so? But if you see in verse 5, it says, God said it isn't like that. It says, teach you, and that man does not live on bread alone. Uh, in verse 3, it means that we need the power of God, and the power of God must come upon us. When the power of God is, uh, has come upon us, then there's nothing that we cannot do. But the Israelites, they only saw to the things uh, of physical things, which was bread. But inside of the wilderness, God is telling us that we must live with the Word of God. It is telling us to change the uh, standards that of how we must live on. It's become the person that is used to God. Really, we must hold on to the Word of God that, and that we are the people that is connected with the eternal Word of God. And the Word of God is eternal, and that is even till now being fulfilled. If we really hold on to the Word, no matter how our children are hindered, it doesn't matter. If your children are really the children of God, then it's okay for them to hinder. If they're hindered, it is time when God will work. Are they facing crisis? Be but that is okay because no one can win over the world. Uh, you can see that uh, the, the captain of the ship did not listen to the words of Paul, but the, and then they faced a great storm. And they threw out all overboard all of the things that were 
on the boat, but there, there was Paul. And if you say 27, 28, 29, it says, Do not fear. Do not fear. I must stand in front of Caesar. And God, it says, if you see, it said, Be at peace. I believe in the God where God. He said he believed in God, but he believes in the God that who will fulfill the word that he has proclaimed. But without us knowing, we always fall into difficulties and crises inside of the field. If the things of God is true, then no matter what kind of crisis might come, it is okay. Really, may you be the people who really enjoy peace. And God has given them a new vision. And what is that true vision that God has given us? That is world evangelization. The Genesis 3 problem that is inside of it is the problem that we cannot do anything about. But this isn't just a problem that just came all of a sudden, but it was, it's a problem that is long-standing. That is why in Genesis 3.15, God has well, promised that He will send the offspring of woman and will save us, because there is no other way. That is why God has given us the offspring of woman to save us. That's why during the uh, age of the tribes, uh, the chiefs, that is when uh, God gave this covenant and to the Israelites, uh, the Abraham, and Abraham had victory with that. And if you see in Exod, uh, Exodus 3.18, you can see in the people who posted the blood uh, lamb, uh, lamb's blood on the doorpost, they all were set free. And you can see later on, they became captives again, and we cannot do anything about that. That is why God gave us the word to restore that. That's the Isaiah 7.14. It said, Therefore the Lord himself will give to the sign, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will, be, will call him Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. And as a and God has given us the word in Matthew sixteen sixteen. All of the problems inside of Christ there is an answer. There's a people who hold on to Christ, God will take care of all of the problems. If you really hold on to the mystery of Christ, then all of your problems God will take care of. What does the Christ mean? It is the anointed one. As they raised the priest, the prophet, and king, they anointed them. But Christ finished all of these three uh, occupations. And we call Christ who took care of all the works of king, priest, prophet. And if you are the child of God who believes in this Christ, then you are the people who cannot fail. God uh, blessed Peter and said, I will build my church upon your rock. I will build my church upon your faith and this gospel will be proclaimed and no one can overcome it. 
and God and God has given us the key to open up the uh, throne, and that is and through Christ. And that is why he said, whatever you loose in earth, and it will be loosed in heaven, and whatever you tie in earth, then it will be tied up in heaven. How does the blessing of the throne come upon us? When we really hold on to Christ, the mystery of Christ, that is when the power that transcends time and space will be upon us and the kingdom of God is upon us. God will take care of everything. There's going to be a lot of problems inside of the wilderness. Wilderness is talking about the field. It's the field where they have no choice but to give unbelief. And if you do not know, have this answer, then we have no choice but to have this problem. Uh, this inside a problem, we have no choice but to grumble. But we are an evangelist. God has prepared everything for us. If you see in verse four, let's read today to, together. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. The Israelites that they must possess the land of Canaan, God protected them. As it says, your clothes did not wear out. And your foot did not swell these 40 years. This means there's nothing that we must worry about. Because everything is in God's perfect uh, guarantee. Don't hold on to an empty shell and waver and be hindered. Really hold on to Christ and wherever you go, really uh, uh, enjoy Christ everywhere you go. Dear God, we give you thanks. And thank you for uh, really calling us as an evangelist. Really looking into the field, really may your word be placed inside of us. And may we um, really find and enjoy your uh, 